good morning to all dear ladies and gentlemen esteemed guests and valued participants i warmly welcome each one of you for today's webinar we are delighted to have you join us for this illuminating session on the quality cosmetics role of evolving technologies and regulations I am Dr. Payal Mittal, Associate Professor at University Institute of Pharma Sciences, Chandigarh University, Mohali, Punjab. We have come together virtually to explore and discuss this webinar entitled as "Quality Cosmetics: Role of Evolving Technology and Regulations." This webinar is designed to be an enlightening and interactive experience, providing you with the valuable insights, expert perspectives, and actionable takeaways. It is our 25th webinar being hosted by the Society of Pharmaceutical Sciences and Research (SPSR) under the mentorship of Dr. Shashi Alok, National President, SPSR, and Assistant Professor, Institute of Pharmacy, Bundelkhan University, Jhansi, UP, India. Our aim is to ensure healthy lives and promote well-being for all at all ages. Our objectives include. to hold conferences for promoting the causes of profession of pharmacy to contribute to programs and services that emphasize the health needs of india and the prevention of diseases to honor the eminent pharmacist engaged in the encouragement of pharmacy profession to promote and facilitate the acquisition dissemination and exchange of pharmacy knowledge and information about the practice of pharmacy and pharmaceutical services through this event we are honored to have an incredible speaker professor dr sanju nanda dean faculty of pharmaceutical sciences maharishi dhyanan university rohtak haryana we are also joined by our respected mrs monica sabarwal convener national secretary of the society of pharmaceutical sciences and research spsr and the managing editor of international journal of pharmaceutical sciences and research igspr and igp without taking much time i request mrs monica sabarwal ma'am kindly to, to take the lead to introduce and welcome our speaker professor dr sanju nanda over to you ma'am thank you so much dr pail mittal a good morning to all my sir monica sabarwal national secretary spsr i am delighted to welcome you all to the 25th edition of spsr webinar series today's topic quality cosmetics role of evolving technologies and regulation organized by spsr we are gathered here today not just as individual but as a global community of over 4000 participants from more than 25 countries this is a testament to the universal relevance of our topic and the shared commitment to understanding and improving the quality of cosmetics through the technology and regulation our spsr webinar series has always been a platform for thought provoking discussions insightful presentations and meaningful interaction today we continue this tradition with a topic that touches upon the interaction of beauty science technology and regulatory affairs as you know the cosmetic industry is global one with a market size of over 500 billion dollars the industry constantly involved the new products and technology being introduced all the time the evaluation has been given by the number of factors including changing customer preferences advances in science and technologies and the new regulatory requirements the topic of today's webinar is essential to the future of cosmetic industry it is my great honor to introduce our esteemed speaker for today's webinar Professor Sandhu Sandhu Nanda, the Dean of Maharishi Dhyanan University, Rohtak, Haryana, India. Professor Nanda is a renowned figure in his field, whose extensive knowledge and experience will undoubtedly provide us valuable insights and perspectives. Professor Nanda, we are truly privileged to have you as with us today. Your contribution to the field are widely recognized, and we are eager to learn from your wisdom and expertise. Before we begin. I would also like to thank the heartfelt gratitude to the SPSR National President Dr. Shashi Alok, the co-convener Dr. Payal Mittal of this webinar, and the organizing committee team members Dr. Saurabh Kose, Dr. Sanjay Nagde, Mr. Ankur Agarwal, and the dedicated team behind the scenes 
whose hard work and dedication have made this webinar possible. I would like to extend my heartfelt thanks to all of you for your participation. Your presence and engagement made this webinar successful and meaningful. Let us embark on this journey of learning and discovery together as we look into the fascinating world of quality cosmetics, evolving technologies and regulation. Once again, I extend my warmest welcome to each and every one of you. Thank you for joining us today and I wish you a truly rewarding experience. Thank you. Let's have a productive session. Over to Dr. Payal Mittal. Thank you, ma'am, to allow me for, uh, for conduct this webinar. Let's start with a brief introduction of Professor Dr. Sanju Nanda. Professor Sanju Nanda, Dean, Faculty of Pharmaceutical Sciences, Maharishi Dhyanand University, Rotak, and former head, Department of Pharmaceutical Sciences, is an alumnus of Dr. Hari Singh Gaur Vishwadalya, Sagar, Madhya Pradesh, B Form and M Form, Indian Institute of Technology, Delhi, PhD, and MDU University, LLB Honors. Additionally, she has discharged the responsibilities of Chief Wardens Girls Hostel and Professor in Charge, Beautification and Floriculture of the University. She also has been the Chairman of Faculty, Board of Studies and Department Research Committee and member of various other allied committees of the University, including Academic Council, Executive Council and University Board. She is also on the Board of Studies of other universities and member of Expert Committee of NBA, NAC, Peer Team, EVC of AICT and PCA Inspection Team, and was a member of COVID-19 Task Force Committee of the University and Rothak District. Professor Danju Nanda has more than 27 years of teaching and around 16 years of research experience. She has got guided 58 MPharm and 10 PhD research scholars and published 110 national and international research and review papers. Her area of research focuses on scientifically validated cosmetical formulation for ethnic skin and hair types. She has filed four patents out of which her work entitled Broad Spectrum Topical Sunscreen Formulation has recently been granted a patent by Indian Patent Office in 22 February 20, 2022. She has also authored six books, including a popular textbook, Cosmetic Technology, and 27 book chapters, as well as nine modules as subject expert and presenter to the e-content writing project of NME ICT CEC of University Grants Commission. Based on her expertise, she was also invited to write a monograph, Cosmetics and Consumers, for the Consumer Education Series of Ministry of Consumer Affairs, Government of India in 2005. Professor, Nandu is a member of, Nanda, Professor Nanda is a member of editorial and reviewer boards of many journals, convener of national and international conferences and webinars. Out of many conferences and seminars organized by her, the most noticeable has been the successful organization of AICD sponsored Atal FDP and five personality development programs sponsored by National Commission for Women, New Delhi. She has delivered three keynote addresses and 110 national and international talks in webinars. Special to mention is the invitation by the Cosmetics Division Government of South Korea to deliver a talk on changing paradigms of cosmetic industry in India in the third international conference on cosmetics and health certification in May 2013. Professor Sanju Nanda has honored with the illustrious Illuminus Award by her alma mater, Department of Pharmaceutical Sciences, Dr. H.S. Kaur Vishwadalya Sagar on the occasion of Diamond Jubilee Year celebration in 2016. Her professional profile was selected for a desk calendar in 2019 entitled Women in Science by Life of Science and was unveiled on 11 February 2019 on the occasion of United Nations Day for Women and Girls in Science at St. J. Stephen's College, New Delhi. She was also honored on the occasion of International Women's Day on 8 March 2022 by an NGO MF, MTFFC Rothak for her support in educating children from the slums. Recently, Professor Nandu, Sanju Nanda was given a letter of commendation by 
Emory University for her uh, outstanding services as Chief Warden Girls Hostel. It's a great pleasure to have more than 4,000 registered participants across the world, approximately 25 countries. Our next one participants are from India, Nigeria, Philippines, Iraq, Pakistan, North Macedonia, Turkey, Canada, Indonesia, Egypt, Saudi Arabia, Sri Lanka, Ukraine, Yemen, Nepal, Mexico, Oman, England, Ghana, Ethiopia, Bangladesh, Ethiopia, Jordan, Kenya, and USA. We are overwhelmed with to express the gratitude for their participation. Thank you all for joining us today. So the highlights of today's webinar include to discover how cutting edge technologies are influencing the formulation of cosmetics, leading to safer and more effective as well as innovative products to understand the role of evolving regulations in ensuring consumer safety and product quality. Explore the challenges and opportunities presented by global regulatory shifts. This session will help to delve into the integration of technology to promote sustainability, transparency, and ethical practices in cosmetics production and consumption. I encourage all the participants to actively engage in discussions, ask questions, and share your experience and knowledge. Together, we can foster a collaborative and innovative environment to explore the full potential of MIC of this session. Once again, thank you all for joining us today. Let's make this webinar an insightful and enriching experience for everyone involved. We are esteemed having our esteemed guest speaker, Professor Dr. Sanju Nanda with us. Welcome, ma'am. So I kindly request you to share thank your you PowerPoint so presentation. Thank you so much. And I kindly request you, ma'am, to share your PowerPoint presentation and the talk. Okay. Is it visible? No. Is it visible, Dr. Payal? Yes, ma'am, it is visible. Uh, please uh, move to the slide share. Why? Fine, ma'am, fine, visible. Okay, namaskar to everybody from uh, India, from Rohtak. Uh, it's really a, a very nice feeling and overwhelming feeling, like rather, by listening to all the deliberations by Dr. Monica, Dr. Payal, and knowing that there is a, been like a good response to this topic. And I hope I'm able to do some justice to it. Uh, this has been a, my, a very keen area. The story of my entry into the area of cosmetics is uh, very uh, dramatic and uh, filmy kinds. But yes, once I uh, entered into it, once I was given this uh, uh, area to teach and uh, finally it became my area of passion and research and finally I realized this is a domain which is very much neglected and needs a lot of scientific backing and regulatory backing. So uh, I start with my presentation. This is my uh, opening slide. My uh, normally my uh, like uh, uh, own slide, which always welcomes the audience to this beautiful and indispensable world of uh, and in the enigmatic world of cosmetics. I always call it indispensable because it uh, we start our day with brushing our teeth with toothpaste and uh, we sleep with that. So it is like everybody is a user. Nobody can say I don't use cosmetics. And then there are lists, various uh, cosmetics enlisted by different uh, countries in their regulatory uh, documents. But yes, uh, it is uh, it has become an inseparable part of a life. I call it enigmatic as well because uh, the uh, like it's a lot of things are expected from the, these products. Uh, it just relates to the beauty. So I, in my upcoming slides, I'll be sharing all this with you. So particularly this uh, webinar was uh, to undertake because I've seen a lot of changes in regulations globally recently, uh, even in India, China, as well as in US. So, uh, and at the same time, uh, the technologies, the new technologies that are otherwise affecting our lives have also creeped in into the beauty world and are affecting the products and our cosmetic treatments. So I thought this would be an apt 
topic to talk to all of you about. And uh, I would also uh, expect and welcome a lot of comments and a lot of uh, other feedbacks from, uh, or a lot of information from the audience as well, so that I also learn in the process. I hail from uh, MD University, Rohatak. I'm a Dean of Faculty of Pharmaceutical Sciences, and uh, I just wanted to take an aerial view of, or a bird's eye view of my most uh, beautiful campus, which is situated in the NCR region of uh, Delhi. And it's been given the most clean and green university status or award in 2018 by MHRD. And now we are the five, uh, amongst the five green mentors of the country uh, give, uh, like because since we uh, are the top runners uh, so we can't every time win this uh, award so we have been assigned the responsibility of mentoring other universities to keep their uh, premises clean and green so um, i welcome you to this university do pay a visit sometime I also take this opportunity to thank all of you, the organizers, especially Mrs. Monica Saparwal and the team at SPSR, as well as to the wonderful uh, uh, like uh, strength of uh, registered participants. It's a very uh, like nice feeling to hear that it's, the number is great. I uh, really thank you from uh, the core of my heart because it's a Sunday and you have sacrificed your Sunday to attend this webinar. Thank you so much. Well, uh, just to start with it, I just uh, uh, wanted to wrap this uh, webinar with some objectives. And uh, I have encompassed this webinar, which was going uh, like it was becoming very long. The presentation was becoming very long, but I thought I'll have some objectives in my mind and uh, ensure that at least I am able to meet those objectives and the audience is able to be benefited after the webinar. So the first one is to understand that uh, quality of cosmetics is very important. You cannot have a product to enhance your beauty without not having some beautiful or some safer ingredients in it. As these products have become an indispensable part of our lives. So as I told you, they uh, we start our personal grooming and uh, personal routine, regimen, daily routine uh, with the tooth uh, using toothpaste and uh, well, taking a bath, using shampoos. And uh, similarly, the whole day we use use uh, uh, n number of products and in the end also we before going to bed we brush our teeth so uh, what is expected is not only they're indispensable since we use these products which at least each one product has 15 to 20 chemicals should be safe apart from being effective and should be able to meet its label claims or whatever claims it is making so that is the prime thing I just wanted to convey through this webinar. Uh, the second one, which I want the objective of my uh, this webinar was that overall, we all know that so many new technologies have uh, are developed or have come into vogue. And these technologies, be it biotechnology, be it herbal technology, be it nanotechnology, be it digital technology, they all have also influenced the world of cosmetics. And actually, they have shifted uh, the purpose of cosmetics to being therapeutic cosmetics, that is so-called cosmeceuticals. And now what is required is, uh, I will discuss in my webinar, why a concerted effort is required from all people who are stakeholders to this world of cos uh, cosmetic products, like the manufacturers, the researchers, the regulators, and uh, in a lot way to the consumers. I know that the uh, today's registered partisan mostly are from the pharmacy background or chemistry background. Uh, we are formulators, we are scientists, but before that we are consumers as well. Since we have these dual perspectives of uh, this particular product, uh, we can understand what we expect and what should be delivered. That means somewhere the ethical part, the consciousness of using right ingredients, right processes should also be incorporated. And there comes the role of regulators that a check is required, some rules and guidelines should be man, uh, prepared from time to time by the regulators. So they have to be uh, sensitive about the changes happening around. Uh, briefly, I'll just touch upon uh, what exactly is unexpected from cosmetics. Uh, they are basically utility products. 
you can call them fast moving consumer goods and uh, the basic expectation from these products is to maintain and improve the general appearance of face and other external parts of the body very categorically the external parts of the body that means its usage is totally on the skin and skin parts and the purpose they are meant to do is primarily it was meant for cleansing and then beautifying and adornment we have pink lips, we make them more uh, uh, sharper pink or better elegant by painting or uh, wearing a red lipstick or a pink lipstick. Similarly, we have nails, we can keep them clean. They look hygienic. When they are uh, clean, they also look elegant and hygienic. But if you look want to look more beautiful, you want to uh, coordinate with your dress, you paint it red or, or the color of the dress. So uh, that is what is called adornment, where you beautify whatever has been given to you by nature, what you already have, you want to highlight and accentuate that. So that is the basic purpose of cosmetics. But truly speaking, and that is why the definition, the, all the uh, definitions, definition of cosmetics in all the uh, acts of the world would encompass by and large these kind of uh, basic features expected or incorporated in our cosmetic products. That means there are any article intended to be rubbed poured, sprinkled or sprayed on. You see the phenomena by which they are to be used, not to be eaten. So they talk totally topic, uh, talking of all those uh, activities or uh, the way it should be used that is rubbed, poured, sprinkled or sprayed on or introduced to or otherwise applied to the human body or any part thereof for the purpose of, the purposes are clear, cleansing, beautifying, promoting attractiveness, or altering appearance. That means not a much of a physic, physiological change is expected like we expect from a drug. So the purposes uh, are very well uh, like uh, served by these products. They cleanses. We have products which cleanses like toothpaste, shampoos. We have products which protects like creams, lipsticks, nail enamels, conditioners. They are products which nourishes, which are like moisturizing cream, uh, hair oils, etc. There are products which beautifies, adorns, and accentuates. That is lipsticks, nail powder. That is the colored cosmetics. Then there are uh, products which deodorizes also, like deodorants, mouthwashes, etc., talcum powders, etc. And gradually and gradually, once they were a very kind elite kind of product, but gradually and gradually, as the purchasing power of uh, the middle class income group became better. Uh, the uh, like since uh, when the we signed WTO and we had a lot of uh, like a free trade by uh, like trade uh, facilities, a lot of uh, foreign brands coming to our markets. We have uh, like uh, ad through advertisements and those we got to know about it. So or uh, because of all this, our purchasing of these products, using of these products increased. And that is the reason this industry is growing. And since we use them, we have we have found the benefit out of them. And somehow we, they have become an inseparable part of our lives. Because uh, somewhere inside, we all want to look good. We want to look young, healthy. And somewhere that is, when you want to do something, that is somewhere in your mind and you are healed at your soul. So you're satisfied, you feel good. Whenever there's a party, you always try to dress up and uh, beautify yourself, take a head bath and um, put some makeup. So uh, that is how these products uh, have creeped it into our lives. They've become an inseparable part of our daily routine. So that's as I tell when the consumer is cheerful and wants to look beautiful and desirable, cosmetics are used. Uh, if I have to tell about the uh, various segments that are in the market, if I just want to focus on in India, mostly it's uh, the same in uh, all over the world. Uh, the segments are divided into skincare, hair care, oral care, colored uh, category of cosmetics, then bath and shower and fragrance. Fragrance is also a very upcoming market. And the dynamics shows the market dynamic shows that it is increasing. Uh, whatever, um, if you just search the net, uh, you'll find a lot of uh, reports, analytical reports regarding the market of these products and we'll realize that this market is always growing. And it is uh, not only a farm, uh, like a regulated, it's because even if it is a regulated market, but still it is treated as a fast moving consumer goods market and the uh, products are being manufactured, sailed, uh, sold and uh, exported to a lo lot of ex 
uh, extent. Even import, they are, are being imported to quite an extent. And uh, uh, one report says that we, we means Indians, uh, Indian market is fourth in generating revenue from this beauty market. So that shows uh, the importance of these products, not only on our, in our lives, but also on our economy, right? Uh, uh, the segment wise also the skincare market is uh, developing because the availability of skincare products with active ingredients, which we are going to discuss later, that have healing and nurturing properties. Uh, so uh, the so-called cosmeceuticals are coming to market with some therapeutic claims, uh, cosmetic products are coming into market. So that is basically supporting the growth of these products in the market. Similarly for hair care segment, because that is related to fashion. So uh, a lot of uh, color hair colors uh, are uh, now being tested by not only people who are graying, but even the young people, the people who are into the glamour world. So this market is also growing very fast. So all this has an impact on our lives as well as on the economy of the nation. Even the global economy, it has an impact on the global economy. So what is uh, now uh, here comes the point that we have to ensure that this product needs to be supported for its growth, needs to be used in a right way, but at the same time is needs to be regulated properly so that in this great rush, the consumer is not hit bad. The consumer is not at a loss. The consumer doesn't suffer uh, due to some unsafe ingredients or unsafe processes. So that is where the role of regulators come into picture. Now, what is the, uh, the way it is growing? The future market, which appears to be in the coming future, is that the quality of the product is going to matter. Uh, the brands will have to compete for quality high end products so who say because there will be a lot of products from lot of a uh, lot many brands only the ones which are good in quality where the uh, consumer is satisfied they only will survive and they'll have a better market there comes the role of quality cosmetics so cosmetics are there but if we prefix it with the word quality, it means a lot. So what does it mean? When a cosmetic product meets desired specifications of safety, performance, stability, and label claims, means from all quarters, whatever has been expected by regulatory bodies, the standards given in the regulations, as well as some in-house specifications, as well as consumer expectations, then that products which gives uh, a similar kind of functionality batch after batch year after year becomes a quality cosmetic product because the consumer not only uh, trust the product or a particular particular product it start trusting the brand itself so any new product also which comes from that brand uh, the consumer will not hesitate in trying because they know that whatever is written on the label is actually going to be uh, going to show in the performance. So they don't mind because these are little elite products. They're a little expensive also. And when you have from a good brand means from a good quality uh, product, you expect it to uh, buy it at a higher cost. So when you expect to uh, make a hole in your pocket when you know that you are spending large you have to have a satisfaction within yourself even before using it that at the time of buying it that it is going to be a product which it has claimed on the label so that is very important that quality is a kind of certificate you get from the consumer so you have to the manufacturer has to maintain it now, how can the quality be maintained or uh, built in? The quality of the finished product can be built in and maintained by monitoring the quality of raw materials. It's always good to follow good manufacturing practices by right kind of uh, raw materials, quality raw materials, have good hygienic uh, premises, uh, skilled people, good machineries, and also uh, validated processes so that the end product is a quality product and you, your batch does not need to be withdrawn from the market uh, due to shortage of anything in quality. So it's very important that these are built in and 
it is also essential that the product should have certain directions the directions on the label should be such which should enable the user to know that how much safe or how much stable it would be after opening the container so there's a shelf life there's a life best before use life says 18 months that is fine till you open the product because these are mostly emulsion based water based products uh, it is expected that the claims or the uh, directions on the label by the manufacturer are very clear that after opening it should be consumed within say six months or three months so now even the regulators have started making an open container symbol uh, to be uh, it, it's mandated in many countries that it should be mentioned that once you open it you should use it within three months or four months or six months whatever is uh, mentioned on that open container label uh, I personally always have been advocating about it that cosmeceuticals should not be treated less than pharmaceuticals. They are actually not less than pharmaceuticals because they are meant to remain in contact with the body. See, as we saw in the definition also, they have to be poured, sprinkled on the surface. So it is going to come, uh, come in contact with the body. We should never forget that cosmetics, which as a product looks very aesthetic, very good smelling, but it's actually made up of a lot of chemicals. Lot means a lot of, not less than 10, not less than uh, 10 to 15. So basically you need so many chemicals. So, and these chemicals are going to come in contact with the surface of the body. Now we should also remember that if you see a product as a pharmacy person, as a formulator, it will strike to you. It's a powder, it's a cream, it's an emal gel, it is a gel, it's a spray. You get to know the dosage form which it, in which it is formulated. So the end product is meant for cosmetic use, but the formulation is either a monophasic formulation or a bi it's a solution or a spray uh, or a biphasic, uh, say, suspension or a lotion in the form of a cream or a paste or a say a spray formulation where aerosol like formulation so since they are formulated like any other pharmaceutical dosage forms most of the ingredients are or excipients are the same as we use in pharmaceutical formulations so we should not forget they are as good as pharmaceuticals because they are also packaged the same way as drug formulations. They are packaged in jars, narrow mouthed uh, bottles, wide mouthed uh, containers, tubes, or uh, pumps, or sprays, or aerosols. So or even capsule shells, uh, the, sometimes the serums, the thick serums, vitamin serums comes in soft gelatin capsules. So they are almost the same. And also they are governed by the same regulators and same act government like uh, regulatory acts like the drug and cosmetics act no drug act is without cosmetics into it it will be food drug and cosmetics act or drug and cosmetics act or whatever so cosmetics are regulated at par with the pharmaceuticals so you can understand why quality of pharmaceutical uh, cosmeceutical or cosmetics are in, uh, are to be maintained and treated at par with pharmaceuticals you can see the list of uh, ingredients. I just wanted to uh, share with you that these are so many uh, things that are added and they all are same as that can be added in any pharmaceutical uh, formulation and they all are into, classified into a category of chemicals. These are uh, maybe categorized in, uh, due to their uh, the way they are used, the colors, the preservatives or the thickeners or but they are all basically one or the other class of chemicals. The industry uh, is at par with the uh, yeah cosmetic industry is at par with the uh, pharmaceutical industry. All the regulations also, if you see, you sit and compare the uh, regulations, the guidance, etc. They are almost at par with the pharmaceutical industry. That is good manufacturing practices, formulation development, standardization of raw materials, development of validated testing methods development of new monographs, development of uh, valid, not only development, documentation also. So development and documentation of validated and cost-effective non-animal cosmetic testing methods, because by and large, the countries are banning the use of animals for cosmetic testing. Then container designs, cosmetovigilance, as we have pharmacovigilance, for drugs, we have material of vigilance for medical devices. We also officially have cosmetovigilance for 
reporting adverse reactions of cosmetic products. Then we also have regulatory affairs department is always a section or a, an office dedicated for regul uh, for uh, like uh, taking care of the regulations or quality of cosmetic products in every regulatory agency of the world. Now, uh, this is what I was referring to that uh, the dosage forms, solutions, suspensions. You just visualize the product, you'll find them into any of these categories that are categories of pharmaceutical dosage forms. So now the point comes that the only difference over here is that it is to be treated or it is to be applied or used on the external surface of the uh, body and uh, at times uh, mostly it is for cosmetic purposes for beautification cleansing but this particular slide is where uh, I have uh, used this as a topical route where I say whenever certain agents are added to take care of some problems of the skin like acne or dandruff then it is a topical kind of arrangement where the drug does not need to go inside the system inside the body or the systemic circulation and it's simple the reason is simple if you have a problem at the surface it can be treated at a surface without bothering the liver and kidneys whether going for bypass uh, like a uh, metabolism or whether uh, dis without disturbing the uh, git and uh, whenever the drug is taken inside ingested inside it is most of the times lost so uh, by uh, first pass metabolism, so there's no point in eating it if it is not required, because uh, if you can just make a topical formulation and it will be spread on the surface and it can act directly as such without being uh, very much metabolized. I don't say it does not metabolize it at all, because in my uh, 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 like uh, slides further, I'll be showing that it is, skin is also a uh, metabol uh, metabolizing organ. And the best part is why not look beautiful without pills? When we can look beautiful with uh, fragrant creams, uh, we, why should we use bitter pills? Now, since I was talking of that, we have to understand that this product remains on the surface and we at times keep on applying a lot of substances to uh, look beautiful for some uh, hours and forgetting that it won't affect our skin. We don't even realize that it's actually staying on the surface. And once you remove it, once it gets removed, it has actually penetrated down to some layers and may get depo uh, deposited there and uh, would may uh, harm you in future or in the coming uh, days. Uh, because we don't uh, realize it as an organ or as a, a system where uh, the cells are viable. We always take it as a wrapping paper. We just treat it as a wrapping paper. We should not do because this is the, if you just uh, see the books, the anatomy books, it says it's the largest uh, organ of the body. It's not a wrapping paper. It's just not a cover. It's an organ of the body. And we all know that organs have some qualities, some functions, and by uh, like seeing even the color of a person, uh, the quality of hairs of a person, quality of nails of a person, one can get to know uh, uh, about the uh, like the genes of that person, ethnicity of that person, health status of that person, a climatic condition from that from where that person is coming, age of that person. Uh, if the person is looking more aged than the age, that means there are some health issues. If it is uh, if this person is looking younger than the age, that means the health condition is very good, and the uh, the person is taking taking some steps to defy age. So aging is inevitable because it is going to happen. You cannot stop aging, but you can defy the process of aging to quite an extent. So one must understand that skin is an organ. It plays many vital roles like protection, sensation, hemostasis. We all know why we sweat and we feel uh, less warmer or uh, less uh, like uh, warmer in summers or we feel cooler in summers. And then excretory system is there. Immunity is there. Metabolism, it is a metabolic site. It's a blood reservoir. It plays an endocrine function and also a route to many drugs. So if it is a wrapping paper, if you understand, it is a wrapping paper means it provides protection, yes. 
to some extent it is the uppermost uh, layer of epidermis the outermost layer of epidermis the stratum corneum is the only layer which is uh, which poses a barrier which um, does not allow env environmental uh, insults to enter into the body but once it is abraded once it is removed then skin becomes very very susceptible to all environmental invasions I wanted to share this. I accidentally found this uh, sometime back that now the structure of the cells of uh, epidermis uh, or skin is uh, taking a new dimension in understanding because some scientists have given, found out that cells, which we normally say they are columnar, they are uh, this shape, actually have a special kind of shape called scutoids. They have named it and they uh, have. Uh, given reasons for it. So this is a point of research which is going on. I just thought I'll share this with you. But when I was talking of it's a metabolic uh, organ, it is, it has a lot of enzymes into it. And actually, it poses sun protection also through its MMP uh, matrix. And uh, it has enzymes which leads to aging which get activated with sun exposure etc that means a lot of enzymatic activity is going on in the skin and uh, one has to take care that some enzymes are activated and some are deactivated so that the skin looks more younger well this is a root also as i told you this can be invasive for invasive formulations for parenterals like subcutaneous intradermal hypodermic intravenous systemic you can have this, you can have a needle and can pass many drugs which uh, cannot be given orally it's in different conditions. But it is also a non-invasive uh, route for formulations which can have molecules or systems or delivery systems which can pass gradually, cross these barriers and go deep down to the epidermis, dermis and finally into the systemic circulation uh, in the subcutaneous area or below the dermal area and can have a systemic action through intercellular, intracellular, or follicular passages. Well, we all know skin is a site for applying cosmetics, uh, like for changing color, texture, glow, a lot of blushes, rouges, we have a lot of creams, we have highlighters, we can uh, alter our appearance. You have seen Kathakali dancers, you've seen many people who just alter their appearances by changing in the makeups. Uh, the hairs are highlighted, uh, the nails are painted, etc. So uh, one thing is clear that skin being uh, uh, playing the role of a protector also uh, gets a lot of uh, insults and damages from the environment, from ours, us also by when we don't take good care, uh, when we don't take good diet from inside to support the skin cell uh, quality, we don't sleep properly, uh, we, we are diseased, etc. So then gradually its quality starts coming down and uh, it starts reflecting either in the quality of the hair or the skin or dark circles or hair fall, etc. So there are their own problems at the site. They could be from outer sources, they could be from inner reasons, uh, they could be some uh, problems of uh, due to bacteria, fungus, etc. They could be genetic reasons as well, but there are problems which finally express on the surface of the skin. So fairness, sun protection, fairness is something which is related to melanin and to sun exposure. Uh, then sun protection, wounds, herpes is a viral disease, psoriasis, it's an immunogenic disease whose cause is not known, fungal infections, cancer, it could be due to the trigger from sun uh, or it could be uh, from uh, some other kind of uh, eruption from inside the body. Uh, hair problems, alopecia could be there, hair loss age due to aging should be, could be there, it could be genetic, it could be uh, due to some disease, it could be due to some radiotherapy, chemotherapy, etc. Photo aging, uh, as I told you, you have collagen and elastin which holds the uh, skin very tight. Uh, but if it, if the uh, collagen and, uh, uh, sorry, the collagenase and uh, the enzymes, which are uh, there to degrade or uh, which are there to uh, like uh, act on these uh, collagen and elastin. So finally they do the damage and you lose collagen and elastin and then sagging of skin and different wrinkles and other features come which come under the category of photo aging. 
then skin uh, acne and pimples it's like a very uh, universal problem especially amongst the uh, young people the sophomores the uh, adolescents the teenagers the pu people in the puberty uh, change range etc and then oral hygiene yes uh, it's not only the tobacco eating uh, is the cause of uh, mouth cancer uh, you have other problems of losing your teeth or malodor of the uh, oral cavity by not maintaining good oral hygiene so when you talk of surface area the rule also takes into consideration the surface area of the buccal cavity that means the teeth and the oral cavity is also considered uh, to be treated by these cosmetic products so toothpaste dentifrices are categorized into this list we have been seeing that uh, the plain cosmetics are not liked by people so you have sometimes namak in your salt in your toothpaste you have color in your hair dye you have uh, a special anti-aging uh, product coming up for middle-aged women then you have herbals and natural suddenly uh, up in the market uh, claim to be more safer then uh, for children you have different products for men uh, endorsing Shah Rukh Khan and Shahid Kapoor and other uh, heroes then a new technology it contains nano it contains herbal it contains stem cells etc so these are the pushers that are in the market that would be there because puffery is allowed and a little exaggerated of claims is also allowed but yes it should not be to the extent of cheating the consumers so uh then it was very it has become like a, a kind of movement has taken place where ngos government agencies consumer affairs divisions and departments have taken uh, uh proactive uh, steps to ensure that this uh, consumer is not cheated uh vis-a-vis -vis cosmetics and uh, finally, uh, there's a way, a different ways by which uh, the cos quality cosmetics are in the market, regulated in the market. One is simply by the uh, standards given by Bureau of Indian Standards under Schedule S of Drugs and Cosmetics Act. Then uh, by ensuring that a manufacturing license is required. Uh, may I tell the audience that normally most uh, many of the countries, most of the countries, the license for manufacturing of cosmetics is essential. GMP conditions are essential by and large, but pre-market approval is uh, generally not required, uh, but which is now changing. I'll be sharing in my slides. Uh, till uh, last year, it was not required. It was left on the organizations or uh, the manufacturers organizations or associations or upon the manufacturer to ensure that the uh, whatever he's uh, making are uh, safe for the consumers. And if there is any kind of uh, litigation, it will go to the consumer awareness or uh, consumer uh, platforms, consumer forums rather. So uh, even in cosmetics, not all ingredients are regulated. There are only four or five classes of the cosmetics will not be the product as such will not be need pre-market approval but yes approval to use uh, uh, certain ingredients uh, will be required like color additives fragrances preservatives and in some countries special kind of ingredients if uh, mandated by the law of that country then uh, the role of consumer and consumer awareness groups has actually made even the regulators alert about this uh, product category. We'll see in our uh, subsequent slides. Now, uh, if we have to uh, build in quality, we have to ensure that whatever do or whatever we do is done to the best possible way. That is, we try to have the best raw materials, best. Uh, processes and best uh, testing methods. So I call it quality by excellence and excellence by quality because if you uh, incorporate excellence in your quality, naturally your product will be an excellent product. So the things which we can uh, generally uh, consider is we take optimized processes in production, we take uh, measures to ensure product safety and quality uh, that reduces liability risk uh, that reduces withdrawal from the market that reduces the uh, chances of losing your goodwill from the market and that increases the uh, customer confidence consumer cons confidence so these are the ingredients i was telling that they need regulation not all but they definitely all the countries provide a list of uh, generally recognized as safe 
and generally not recognized as safe ingredients. And uh, even for those sensitive or uh, not recognized as safe uh, ingredients, there is a limit uh, till which it is permissible, say for heavy metals, etc. So uh, uh, one has to be careful about the regulations of that particular country for which the product is being maintained. Registration and listing of cosmetics is now becoming essential. This, these are the latest developments that are taking place. And I feel so happy because I, uh, that reflects that uh, the agencies have taken the onus of uh, ensuring their role in maintaining the quality of products. Because before that, the role was given to the, organ uh, the manufacturer organizations or to the manufacturer himself. So uh, we can see this happening through uh, various uh, measures taken by regulatory bodies to curb adulterated and misbranded products. India uh, also uh, took a great step in 2013-14 uh, regarding uh, stopping the import of uh, cosmetic products uh, because uh, people from all parts of the world were dumping the products and we were buying it uh, without maintaining or checking the quality. So registration of cosmetic products became very essential that year and all the products that would enter into the Indian market for sale need to be first or need to get themselves first registered and complete the documents and whatever uh, quality parameter, data for quality parameters was required. Uh, seeing this, we also uh, are like uh, happy to see that uh, Cosmetic Rules 2020 within the Drug and Cosmetic Act is in function and it is much better than and uh, much clearer than what we used to have about the cosmetic products. And uh, another new drug, Medical Devices and Cosmetics Bill is submitted in the Parliament. Uh, and we expect something more better to come once it is enacted. Then at the same time, we also saw cosmetic rules 2020 coming from China. They, uh, these rules from China came after a long span of many decades. Uh, and uh, that is also something very good because, you know, quality is not your country's or my country's concern. It is a concern to any consumer that uses it, any part of the world. Quality is quality. It is universal. Uh, similarly, MOCRA, the, uh, the Modernization of uh, Cosmetic Regulations Act of 2020 the same time period of USFD also came. And I'll be sharing with you certain highlights of this act. And similarly, 207, uh, uh, the ISO Regulation 22716, which EU has adopted, is binding on all the uh, uh, cosmetic manufacturers, uh, of European Union. This is an essential document to be submitted or followed. Safe production of cosmetics, whose responsibility I have discussed it. Uh, one, it isn't like it's your or your or your responsibility. It's everybody's responsibility, whosoever is concerned. If it is uh, like uh, import of cosmetic CDSU, if it is about a new cosmetic, it is CDSU. If it is about manufacturing, it is state. Uh, FDAs, if it is standards, making uh, better standards for cosmetics under schedule S, uh, this BIS has been assigned this duty of, Bureau of Indian Standards has been assigned the duty of making standards for cosmetics in India. IUS takes care of all the uh, cosmetic products which fall under the category of Ayurvedic, Yunani, uh, or um, uh, like uh, Siddhi or homeopathic formulations. Similarly, uh, we have now a specific department of pharmaceuticals under the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. So they, uh, all these departments report to them and uh, ICMR are also doing a good job. Ministry of Consumer Affairs takes care of the uh, any uh, consumer uh, complaints or consumer grievances. And the two people who are directly involved is the consumer firstly, because consumer must bring it Fourth, if the consumer is not satisfied or cheated, and there have been cases, a father of a small child of uh, using um, who used uh, Johnson and Johnson baby oil on his uh, child 
saw, saw blisters coming up and he reported to the drug control, state control drug control authorities uh, was uh, like inquiry was commissioned and all the 12 products of johnson and johnson were found having some uh, wrong claims and uh, were not as per uh, the claims mentioned and they were uh, like uh, prohibited from marketing so the consumer is consumer is aware consumer reports now there's a special term called cosmetic vigilance you can report it to your pharmacist to your doctor to your district hospital where a pharmacovigilance teams work so it's very easy to write to consumer care departments uh, so you must bring it in the knowledge if you come across any adverse reaction from a uh, cosmetic product. Similarly for the formulator, because we are also there, the, anybody who buys a product buys with a trust and the trust is reposed on us and we should honor that trust. We should follow some kind of uh, ethics and we should ensure that we do our best. We use apply our best of minds and heart to it and make the formulation thinking that if we have to apply, our family members, our kids have to apply it, they would be safe. So that is very essential. Uh, since these formulations mostly uh, remain either on in the manufacturing premises or on the shelf, so I'm going to start with how the quality uh, when inbuilt through good manufacturing practices will help it to remain good, safe, aesthetically elegant, and useful to the consumer on the shelf. So uh, in uh, the, if you talk of India, Schedule M2 of Drug and Cosmetic Act 1940 and Rules 1945 presently gives guidelines on premises, personnel, raw materials, SOPs, batch record keeping, validation, printing and packaging, equipment, cleaning, etc. Even about the quality of water to be used, the quality of personnel over there, etc. Similarly, the Bureau of Indian Standards lays down standards of all cosmetics listed in Schedule S. So one has to follow uh, the guidelines, uh, one have to uh, comply with the quality standards, and if not found up to the standards, it is a uh, authority of state uh, DAs to take action against the manufacturer if reported so. The benefits of following GMP by the manufacturer uh, and uh, to the user is enlisted here. Uh, initially, the, it was felt that it's a very time consuming and an expensive thing, why it should be done. But now one is reaping the benefits because it ensures consumer safety, first of all. It complies with legal and regulatory requirement because now uh, it is not left up to the discretion of the manufacturer. Now it is a mandate. Under Schedule M2 of Drug and Cosmetic, it's a mandate to follow GMP guidelines. Uh, in USA, they call it current good manufacturing practices, where every time it's upgraded, one has to follow it. Then it reduces risks of consumers and also risks of facing uh, court litigations. It improves marketability and transparency. As I told you, if a product performs well, uh, products of a company are established as safe, as uh, trustworthy, so the marketability of that product improves automatically. The brand positioning takes place very easily and uh, the, the, the consumer feels as if the systems are very transparent. I can always uh, like uh, trust these uh, products. And in case of any kind of uh, problem, I can always also reach them and get a kind of compensation. So it's a win-win situation for consumer manufacturer and regulator as well. All the people, consumers, manufacturers, and regulators. So by far, everybody is benefited. Uh, well, this is a brief about uh, the uh, journey of uh, cosmetic rules that came recently in 2020. And uh, similarly, as I told you, US FDA has also introduced mandatory registration and listing of cosmetic products with effect from December 2022. Uh, the timeline has become very important because since June 23, they have stopped any kind of voluntary registration. They are not allowing it. We will have to apply them. They're making uh, forms, online forms for it. And these are certain definitions uh, because rules 2020 of India says that uh, about uh, emphasis a lot about import of registration of import of cosmetics. So there, these words are. I've just picked a couple of words like actual manufacturer, 
so here a uh, doc, uh, like a uh, document or a uh, like a uh, form has to be filled about the actual manufacturer in relation to import of cosmetic means a person whose manufacturers uh, who manufactures uh, cosmetics at his own manufacturing site in a country other than india but approved by national regulatory body or any other authorized competent authority in that country so it could be in india it could be since being imported so it's, it it should be approved uh, by the uh, competent authority of that country so his name can be entered as an actual manufacturer so sometimes the actual manufacturer is not the person who is doing the business so he authorizes an agent and the authorized agent means a person in india who is authorized by the manufacturer the agent shall be responsible for the business activities of the manufacturer in india including compliance to the provisions of the act and rules made there under and the explanation to this given in the rules is that for the purpose of this clause person includes a company or a unit or a body corporate or any other establishment then there is another very important terminology that's called legal manufacturer or brand owner so in relation to import of cosmetic means a person who authorizes the other manufacturer from india or overseas for the manufacture of cosmetics by way of an authorization referred under rule 12 and the explanation given in this is that for the purpose of this clause person includes again a company or a unit or a body corporate or any other establishment so it cannot be a sole person it could be a company as well then there is a word for the first time it has been incorporated in any cosmetic uh, act of rules it's the term is new cosmetic we have been used to the term new drugs now we have a term called new cosmetic so what does it mean when you have to categorize it a new cosmetic means a cosmetic which contains a novel ingredient which has not been used anywhere in the world so it's very challenging or is not recognized for use in cosmetics in any national or international literature so it's a new invention it's a new discovery it's a new thing or absolutely novel thing which can be given the name of new cosmetic if it meets these criteria in other term uh, other terms that are used uh, very categorically clear over here is use before or date of expiry which means the date recorded on the container label or wrapper as a date up to which the cosmetic shall retain its characteristics as per standards at proposed storage conditions stated on the label so label information becomes very very crucial and it should be true truly uh, put or by the manufacturer so these are about import of cosmetics if anybody is interested can download it from the cdsc website similar there is a chapter for distribution there are different forms form cos five for license uh online license cs cos uh, cos i believe is for cosmetics so uh, six is for loan license etc for sale well there are other forms also if you one uh, manufacturer wants to manufacture different products uh, in different premises that is from more than one so if cosmetics are manufactured at more than one premises a separate application for each of such premises shall be made and a separate license obtained for each such premises that's very clear it isn't that if you are making lipsticks at two places so you'll take only one license it will be taken for both the premises well now i'm going to talk a little about the european union as well iso 22716 certification is to Uh, for product safety and quality of cosmetics personal care and household products it covers a big range the aim of the certification is to ensure the safety and quality of cosmetic products on the basis of uniform and transparent specifications uh the person who has to manufacture has to take a certification and they have to follow these iso uh, guidelines of iso uh, 22716 this particular iso uh the document contains specifications relating to the manufacture monitoring storage and shipping of cosmetic products exclusively for cosmetic products and these aspects are also included in an audit so audit is something where you get it get the whole thing done by somebody from outside and the quality is then finally ascertained 
see for uh, somebody from in house you would uh, get uh, biased you would be pressurized you could, there could be so many reasons but when somebody from outside a third party does it so then whatever findings are there are considered to be close to true so ISO uh, 22716 certification is particularly relevant for manufacturers of finished cosmetic products. The standard is not applicable for producers of raw materials or for cosmetic products. It's only for finished products. The initial aim of ISO 22716 is to comply with the EU cosmetic regulations. Uh, this is intended to establish a high level of product safety for consumers. EU is very, very, very particular about its uh, products and uh, they are very proactive in releasing their hot list or prohibited list, uh, etc. Cosmetic GMP certification, according to ISO 22716, proves that the processes in a cosmetic company complies with good manufacturing practices. And if good manufacturing practices are actually uh, followed or complied in letter and spirit, uh, there are a little likelihood that there'll be a product failure. So if it is honestly followed, the product will have a good market feedback because it covers that personal, ensures the, that personal premises and equipments are of the best quality. Quality control and other quality systems are well in place. Hygiene is properly regulated in the manufacturing premises. Dermatological testing of all products is done. There it is allowed. Since 2004, animal testing of ingredients and products is banned. So they have their own validated non-animal testing methods normally given by OSED, Organization of Economically uh, Economic uh, Developing uh, Countries. However, giant companies like L'Oreal finds it difficult in exporting their products to countries like China where animal testing is essential. So there they have to do it only for China, but for European market, they don't need to test on animals. So they reap the benefits as well uh, by optimized processes in production, increased product safety and quality, reduce liability risk, increase cost, customer confidence, increase in adverse reaction reporting through cosmetic vigilance. So they are also very uh, like uh, on always on the tab for uh, any kind of adverse reaction reporting, and they immediately address that. In fact, it was in France, uh, uh, I believe that uh, for the first time this thing started and now it is becoming a part of the regulations. Uh, now we're talking of uh, the MOCRA regulation uh, that's modernization of uh, Cosmetic Regulation Act of 2020-22. Uh, initially, uh, it was uh, under the FFTC uh, Act of 1938. But now they have make a made a special provision for uh, cosmetics and they call it MOCRA. Uh, here for the first time, the US FDA ha has made it effective with new authorities. It was uh, um, enacted or it was released. These uh, thing came for the public was in December 2022. Uh, before that, as I told you, the manufacturers were not required to go for pre-market approvals. They were just to uh, ensure, uh, volunteer, uh, go for voluntary registration with their organizations, associations, and uh, would just wait for any uh, problem to come up. Otherwise, uh, they would take care in the manufacturing processes and would not seek any kind of approval for launching the product in the market. But this will, this has stopped now from June, 2023. It was very clearly made in December 2022 uh, that uh, since with effect from June 2023, there'll be no voluntary registrations allowed. And what will start will be mandatory registration of facilities uh, by the cosmetic manufacturers. They'll have to register their manufacturing sites with the US FDA, and they also have to list their cosmetic products in, uh, into their cosmetics and colors division. USFNA and the reporting advert adverse event reporting also has been now made mandatory in USA. The manufacturers will now be subject to inspection for by the USFD authorities for manufacturing records. They uh, the FDA has taken in hand the authority to 
call the product, that is the product recall. Label should have the contact information of a responsible person. Now, this is very important. Uh, no other country has done it, that a contact number of a person, responsible person should be on the label. So that in kind of, uh, in case of any kind of, uh, say, uh, consumer uh, getting affected or there is a problem to the authorities, immediately the person can be contacted. And now they are also into because uh, people are uh, a lot of people are allergic to fragrances. And uh, a step before this was that for people had to mention about the fragrance that is used because uh, many people are particularly uh, allergic to a particular kind of uh, fragrance. So now they are also uh, developing certain regulations for fragrance allergens. Uh, they also went um, say helpful for uh, manufacturers they uh, not only just imposed the guidelines or the new act they also had a listening session with manufacturers uh, so they were uh, the manufacturers were called and the issues were discussed so that the mokra could be effectively implemented so this was majorly about the you know, major changes that are taking place in uh, the cosmetic products in the major, uh, say, countries of the world, uh, recently, which have changed the regulations. Uh, for anybody who's interested in uh, a particular country, are requested to visit the website of that uh, agency of that particular country for latest updates, because uh, in this webinar, it wasn't so possible to comprise all the countries, uh, though I thought I'll do it at least for all the participants for, who are from different various countries who are participating today, but it wasn't possible. Uh, what matters is that we understand that the regulatory bodies of the globe, especially the ones who are the leaders, are India as a uh, almost a developed country, I must say now, after the Chandrayaan uh, landing, uh, Chandrayaan 3 landing. So uh, we are actually uh, have the potential to have the best quality, cost-effective uh, cosmetic products. We are a big market. We are big users, big manufacturers, and we can make quality products at reasonable prices too. Uh, so that's why our uh, rules are also evolving very fast. Now, I'm going to touch upon in the second part of my uh, webinar about uh, something more which is going parallelly uh, along with the simple cosmetic products which are mentioned in the Drugs and Cosmetics Act under a definition. These products are not listed, not mentioned. They are not uh, as a uh, technical or a regulatory term, but they are in the market. The consumers are using it. The technologies are affecting it. And uh, they ha uh, have changed the face of the conventional cosmetics. So I'm going to talk about that and what all rules are somehow in certain countries, there are certain uh, frameworks, uh, regulatory frameworks made for it. I'll just uh, share with you a couple of which I know, maybe you people must be knowing more also, but uh, what I keep a tap on. So one thing is sure that there's a new category which is already into the market for quite some years. In fact, from 1966, and uh, we call them cosmeceuticals, but I uh, don't call them cosmeceuticals as such because uh, no government agency has adopted. USA has not accepted it. India has not accepted it. And if you see the regulations of any other country for such kind of products, no country has given this terminology as cosmeceutical. It's a, a hybrid name coined by the industry, therapeutic agents in cosmetics. So pharmaceutical agents and cosmetics means cosmeceuticals like pharmaceuticals cosmeceuticals so at least one thing i can say is that my claim that cosmos cosmetics are no less than pharmaceuticals is valid and correct and rightly pointed out so uh, why why we need therapeutic agents in cosmetics is because they're certain as i told you it's a sight a face or hands or hair scalp so it is liable to environmental bacterial or fungal infection or internal expression of some disease like viral disease herpes etc so there the cosmetics alone are not sufficient to take care of skin and body parts we normally apply certain ointments and certain medicated creams which are prescribed by the doctor but when it comes to you know something closer to the nose or on the face 
uh, we can uh, apply an ointment somewhere on the scalp or at the back, but we would avoid a very uh, sticky ointment on the face. So we would like to have it in a formulation, which is uh, quite similar to a good, fragrant, uh, very smooth textured cream. And uh, here it requires the use of a base, a cosmetic base to incorporate these ingredients. So there's a paradigm shift. Cosmetic products are now being used for vehicles for topical therapeutic formulations. I think with my uh, certain images, I'm uh, uh, like um, showing on my slides, many things are self-evident and self-explanatory. So as I told you, this is a modern version of cosmetics, not legally, but only technically. As a part of current lifestyle ideology, the global trend in the cosmetic industry is towards developing medicinally active cosmetics and in the pharmaceutical industries towards cosmetically oriented medicinal products. So when they make ointments, they ensure that it's creamy, it's good fragrances are it so that the person uses it as a preference or doesn't mind using it. So cosmetic companies are finding ways to deliver smart dose ingredients that do not require medical regulations and to introduce steroids, hormones into lip balms, which would result in production of cosmeceuticals that could help to improve body mass, nail, and hair growth. So there could be many reasons for uh, using these cosmetic vehicles. So these cosmetic, uh, in, these ingredients into cosmetical uh, vehicles or cosmetic bases actually are uh, there because a lot of new ingredients are coming from the new technologies and uh, something like uh, herbal technology you get some extracts some uh, bioorganic molecules uh, say silymarine so silymarine was normally edible now it is used for dermatological purposes you have saffron saffronal you have mangiferine you have reservatrol uh, similarly you can uh, you also have many delivery systems by sun uh, say some uh, nanoparticles or nano delivery systems which uh, encapsulate the essential oils or some very delicate very potent very uh, uh, like cosmetically useful uh, ingredients. So you have various kinds of liposomes and uh, other uh, phosphosomes, etc., niosomes, etc. So nanotechnology, uh, since is in vogue. Similarly, you have uh, ingredients coming from biotechnology like stem cells, uh, some uh, human, uh, like something from humans, some. Uh, placental uh, extracts, uh, etc. Something derived from marine uh, for, um, animals, some uh, from bioprocesses of uh, and fermentation technology. So when these ingredients come, so they have to be uh, for special purposes like for beautification, for skin, uh, for anti-aging for that matter. It's the most popular for uh, say re removing certain kind of scars or blemishes, uh, etc. So there, uh, the whole thing changes. The, the profile of the cosmetic product changes. Similarly, the new technologies that have you know, made cosmetics slightly more differently attempted are like packaging. You have pumps, a lot of pumps coming up, a lot of um, uh, formulations which come in, uh, say particulate absorbed in certain particles or clays. Uh, you have a lot of uh, sheets coming up bioabsorbable masks, face masks, etc. So the way packaging technology has evolved, the polymers have played a great role. If I talk of packaging technology, it's not only the containers, it's also about the polymers that are being used uh, in uh, the beauty industry that is actually uh, bringing a lot of uh, change in the way cosmetics have been perceived. And now latest is a lot of artificial intelligence and digital like technology, which is playing its own role. Now the products will be used only if the digital uh, platforms will allow uh, or satisfy a user. I'll, I'll be sharing a couple of uh, slides on that too. So this I have already uh, told that Biological Beauty is not hot right now with legacy brands, including L'Oreal, Biologiki and uh, Neutrogena collaborating with microbial companies to develop biologically driven skincare products. 
similarly for herbal uh, cosmetics uh, we have been quite comfortable as indians we had been comfortable because of a folklore but now the world over uh, in silico studies by using uh, docking of these into targets time especially of anti aging my group is also working on it so uh, we have uh, we are establishing first in silico uh, about the bio organic molecules get the uh, molecules and then we make various delivery systems so these are from herbal sources uh, other ingredients from natural and herbs are also being used anyways they were always used uh, then uh, we all know that this was a hybrid word used uh, initially in 1961 by Raymond Reed and uh, then by M Albert M. Kligman for their uh, retinol and uh, babas so these are cosmetic products with active ingredients having drug-like benefits So these are the new dermatologicals. As I told you, they are the new cosmeceuticals, new dermatologicals. But what uh, is to be taken care of is that the legality of it and the consumer should not get harmed by the by you know taking a benefit out of the situation. So uh, these are the regulatory status in our country. Somewhere there is a strict demarcation that either it is a cosmetic or it is a drug. Somewhere such kind of products which contain certain active ingredients are called functional cosmetics. Uh, cosmeceuticals, though industry calls it, though you find it a lot of in, in, uh, published literature, is actually not legally accepted term. <coughs> Quasi drugs, countries like Japan uh, use such kind of uh, uh, products uh, with a little functionality, call them quasi drugs. Canada, New Zealand, they have the different uh, related products, etc. And in some countries, it's either drugs or cosmetics. You have to have monographs for separately for it. I'll just share over here. These are Japan, New Zealand, they call them related products. Korea calls them functional cosmetics. America is very clear about it. Excuse me. See, this is all I've discussed with you. America, since it's a federal kind of government, so they, uh, the state wise, also the regulations keep changing. In uh, Australia, there is a TGA who monitors all this. Uh, if it is a new chemical ingredient, then NICNAS takes care of that. In Canada, they call them Dharma Cosmetics. In Thailand, it's medicated cosmetics, normally called controlled cosmetics. Now, this is about novel drug delivery systems, which I discussed. Now, this was something like... A, a situation where or a time when uh, it, the consumers can be benefited if properly used and uh, declared. It could be a strategy where cosmetic formulations are being used as base vehicles. Because otherwise, in many countries, the anti dandruff sh shampoo is a cosmetic and anti dandruff shampoo is not a cosmetic. So, uh, there could be other situations also. But there could be a ploy also. That could be a uh, like a bypass of regulatory clutches also, and uh, especially by doing so, they not only push their product in the market uh, without getting regulatory compliances, but they also uh, demand more money from the consumers. They uh, make the products look more expensive, elite, and then charge more cost for. They also lure consumers with advertisements. They pay money to the celebrities and they get advertisements. Anyways, now it is becoming less popular. The uh, agencies uh, or the celebrities rather, they are careful of not endorsing anything which they are not sure of. Because uh, one thing is very clear, this is a picture of uh, micro sponges. So uh, our group makes it. Uh, so we make uh, 
we load the drug molecules or the active ingredients on a <clears throat> in a micro sponge and then we put into vehicles considering see the difference in here if it is a free drug it will irritate on the skin but if it is a like a, a drug in the delivery system it will take little more time to go deeper but it will not irritate it will have a sustained effect and it the free drug will be lesser because it will get absorbed in the process in the uh, either epidermal layers or the dermal layers where it is desired and very less will be available to go into the systemic circulation. <clears throat> we have to understand that whatever is put on the skin impacts heavily on the structure, function, biochemistry, metabolism and regulation of the skin. But there are challenges. Because of all this, there are big challenges for the cosmetic chemist. Uh, which skin layer to target? There are different skin layers, and they have these layers have different properties, different kind of cell structures. Uh, number of layers is also different. So it's very important where the disease is expressed, where is the genesis of the disease, and where it is expressed. So which skin layer to target? Which what is what should be the right size of the drug or delivery system, nano or micro or normal? Then. If it is going to have a medicinal effect, then it should have a dose also. And regarding such formulations, what are the present regulations of that country? That's very important and a big challenge for all the formulators of such products. Like we made some medicated <clears throat> lipsticks for herpes uh, labialis, acyclovir. Because here you can't put your finger in an ointment uh, jar or a tube and then spread it. Instead, we had a more uh, elegant way of applying the uh, lipstick, which had it micro sponges uh, loaded with acyclovir. And these micro sponges uh, in the waxy layer of the lipstick base would stick or stay on the skin for some time and give a sustained action. They'll not get washed off easily. And similarly, we made an emulsion gel for the one which was in the skin. We also made uh, micro sponges for alopecia of, <clears throat> for minoxidil. This is, uh, we do targeting with uh, these um, nano structured carrier systems. For pilosebaceous targeting both for alopecia as well as for acne. And we, this is the hypothesis we have that the size is uh, of our formulations is a uh, little smaller than the size of the pores. <clears throat> well, so coming back to amendments where because of these changes, these different technologies, uh, the regulatory bodies are making now new changes to their regulations and uh, uh, releasing uh, guidelines on uh, especially nanotechnology. Initially, the US FDA said, we do not regulate technologies, we regulate products when the first batch of nanotechnology-based cosmetics came. So it took many years to, for them to establish a nanotechnology uh, initiative. And uh, then they came with certain guidelines. EU also came with certain draft guidelines. Then <clears throat> there are certain uh, uh, guidelines for biotechnology where they stop. There are certain clear directions or gazette notifications where they stop such products to be claimed as cosmetics. <clears throat> and then as I told you, for new cosmetic ingredients or for import, even in India, we have now clearer laws. Okay, these are uh, in 2012, two new draft guidelines I was mentioning about, where for nanotechnology in cosmetics and food, stress the need for safety assessment, characterize physical and chemical properties like particle size and distribution, aggregation and agglomeration, surface chemistry, solubility, density, stability, porosity. <clears throat> because these technologies were uh, uh, used for the first time and they had no uh, historic data about its safety. Then, well, there's another way by which the quality of cosmetics can be uh, maintained and uh, the consumer can believe is by use of certifications, marks and logos. Certifications play a significant role in building consumer trust in an industry where false claims are common. Certified cosmetics stand out as trustworthy options. They show the consumer that the product has undergone rigorous testing and adheres to strict quality standards. 
A certified product also communicates a brand's commitment to sustainability and environmental responsibility. It values that modern consumers actually highly appreciate. These validate and ensure when there's a certificate from a particular agency. So what all is, you know, what all is ensured in the minds of the consumer is authenticity. That is original, actually good. Credibility, that is dependability, high quality, safety use, customer satisfaction, business growth. It's related. If the customer is satisfied, the business is bound to grow. Need of the regulators where it is mandatory. Need of religious groups and communities. I'll tell you how halal certification, etc. is uh, given. Then adherence to ethical practices <clears throat> like, uh, uh, Peter, like we have uh, for animal testing, a uh, no to animal testing. Social and uh, environmental responsibilities where we have eco mark that whatever product we made will not harm the environment, neither will uh, exploit it for making, nor will we uh, uh, like harm it by dumping uh, something which will not, which is not biodegradable. And then the global impact of it. <clears throat> Certification is essentially the process of attesting that a specified quality or standard has been uh, achieved or exceeded. It is an evaluation and recognition process of a product meeting a set of requirements or criteria by an authorized body. So, Whosoever you're applying for uh, a certification will have their own set of requirements, or own kind of form. You have to submit the data and meet the requirements. And if it is met, if any inspection is required and, it, and you are successful in that, then a certification is given. When normally people, you know, hang it like a certificate on their walls and any consumer, any vendor, any stakeholder who enters the office premises uh, or uh, visits the website, gets to know that these are people who make authentic stuff. <clears throat> we people have come across these symbols quite often. Ecomark, Leaping Bunny, then organic or natural ingredients. These have their own significance. When we say Ecomark, it's essential that it is uh, made up of environment-friendly ingredients or it's an environment-friendly product. Leaping Bunny logo ensures elimination of animal testing from all stages of product development. So no animal was tested at any stage. No ingredient is added from animal source and no testing has been done on animals. This mark uh, confirms that the product contains natural and organic ingredients and measured using environment friendly practices. To give you a glimpse of uh, our uh, famous uh, BIS, uh, this is the building Manak Bhavan and uh, it's situated in Delhi. More than 30 Indian standards of finished cosmetics are listed in Schedule S of the Drugs and Cosmetic Rules 1945, as per which the cos cosmetics in their finished form for the purpose of manufacturing or importation need to conform to these specifications. BIS is entrusted with the responsibility of setting standards for cosmetics on behalf of CDSCO of Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. So this is a body which makes standards for cosmetics under the reg uh, national regulator CDSU's uh, authority. When we are talking of certifications, we'll be looking also for certifications which are in vogue for natural and organic chemists, especially after the uh, like market flooded with a lot of products from herbal sources, natural sources, organic sources. So it was so difficult for somebody to judge uh, whether uh, this product, which is naturally going to be more expensive than the rest of the products, is actually uh, worth the money or not. So in that case also, <clears throat> these standards help. And there are a couple of standards like Certec, Canada, NASA, Australia, EcoCert, France, Cosme Bio, France. In this is the ISO 16128. <clears throat> the first part certification provides guidelines on definitions for natural and organic cosmetic ingredients. In addition to natural and organic ingredients, other ingredient categories which may be necessary for natural and organic product development are also defined with certain restrictions. So see anything that helps in the growth of these <clears throat> natural or organic ingredients is also restricted. Well, the part two of this uh, ISO certificate defines approaches to calculate natural, natural origin, organic, 
and organic origin indices for the ingredient categories in part one. It provides a framework to determine the natural, national origin, organic and organic origin contents of products based on these ingredients. So they are all deep and deep into it so that, you know, when they do their work properly, the, whatever results or finally uh, comes out, the consumer is very clearly aware of that, knows about it. <clears throat> Another very important certification is the halal certification. I hope you must have, many of you must have heard about it. it halal is a term, it's an Arabic term, which means permissible under the law. Halal food is that which adheres to Islamic laws defined in the Quran. Halal cosmetics don't include ingredients derived from animals, genetically modified organisms that are affirmed as unclean according to Islamic law. Neither do they contain alcohol, which has several negative effects on the skin. These beauty or personal care products are vegan and cruelty free at the same time. So once a product is halal certified, anybody who is vegan also or who doesn't want to use products tested on animals or cruelty, uh, wants to use cruelty-free uh, products can bank upon a product which is having a halal certification. <clears throat> so these are the basic uh, requirements for a product uh, to get a halal certification. They must uh, have these, uh, like they should not have products derived from pigs or animals, uh, uh, derived from animals allowed by the Muslim religion, but not slaughtered accordingly, or use of intoxicants or ethyl alcohol or for GMOs. Every country gives their own, uh, they have their own logo and they have certifications. So uh, I'm just sharing a couple of them I found. <clears throat> Another certification which is prevalent or which is valued in certain parts of the world is kosher certification. <clears throat> this certification verifies that the ingredients, production processes, including all machinery and or food service process complies with the standards of kashrut, that is Jewish dietary law. So again, some very religious uh, laws uh, have their impact. This is about the Jewish law. Then we all have been like prevalently um, hearing about vegan certification. Vegan certification in all processes that a certain product do not contain any animal products or byproducts. And there's a lot many other things. They uh, These products should not contain uh, animals like meat, fish, fowl, or byproducts like egg, egg products, milk, milk products, honey, honey, wheat products. It should not also contain products like silk, dyes, or sugar filtered with bone char it should be cruelty free. So there are many now dedicated and devoted <coughs> users and they would love to use products which have a vegan certification. Then as I told you, this is a leaping bunny, a very cute symbol of a bunny. And normally many uh, cosmetic uh, irritancy and uh, dermal patch testings were done on uh, rabbits. So a uh, Leaping Bunny logo is issued for use by companies which produce cosmetics, personal care, household and cleaning products, which are free from animal testing and comply with the Leaping Bunny certification criteria. <clears throat> this is one of the most trusted cruelty-free certifications. And it's the best assurance that a company has made genuine commitment to help end animal testing. So before getting this uh, logo or the certificate, it, uh, the company has to go or meet rigorous criteria uh, of testing, which applies globally and extend over and above laws governing animal testing and include ongoing independent audits. Only then can they display the Leaping Bunny logo. Because if this logo is displayed, the value of this logo is so much, especially for those people who believe that animals should not be used for testing. Uh, they should, um, no cruelty should be imposed on animals. So it's so prestigious for them uh, uh, so that it becomes so expensive also because nobody can display this logo till they have really adhered to the uh, norms and have met all the rigorous criteria regarding getting this logo. Then there is another um, group. It's a group of uh, eight countries 
कोयलेशन है एट एनिमल प्रोटेक्शन ग्रुप्स बैंडेड टुगेदर टू फॉर्म द कोयलेशन ऑफ कंज्यूमर इंफॉर्मेशन ऑन कॉस्मेटिक सीसीआईसी दैट्स कॉल्ड डॉरेस डे द सीसीआई प्रमोट्स अ सिंगल कॉम्प्रिहेंसिव स्टैंडर्ड एंड एन इंटरनेशनली रिकॉग्नाइज्ड लीपिंग बनी सिंबल सो दे हैव क्लब टुगेदर व्हेन ऑल दीस कंट्रीज आर सेटिस्फाइड दे गिव अ कंसोलिडेटेड लीपिंग बनी लोगो Sometimes uh, people get confused. What's the difference between a leaping bunny or a PETA certificate? PETA is people for the ethical treatment of animals. Uh, they also stop people from using animals for for testing. But these people do not uh, conduct independent audits. They just uh, ensure that they uh, the companies uh, comply with. uh cruelty free standards but for getting a leaping bunny uh logo the companies will have to face an audit another very uh, popular um, now certification is called made safe uh, especially it got uh, well noticed when on shark tanks um, one of the mama earth's uh, co-founder uh, she was she mentioned about it how it difficult it was to Like uh, she could I mean, do her startup with the getting the certification made safe for baby products initially, but it was so difficult for her to get the certificate. Once she got the certificate, her products uh, were widely accepted. I'm sorry, but once this uh, to get this certificate wasn't so easy. Uh, well made safe is the only human health and ecosystem focused product certification program the mission is to revolutionize how consumer products are made thereby eliminating the use of harmful chemicals made safe is so much more than certification program it's from the website it's a philosophy of change in practice i was impressed by this statement of its founder As a mom, I wanted products that would not harm my babies or their uh, future products without harmful pollutants. So this was like created as uh, as a mother, as a mom uh, who felt that my baby should not be harmed due to the chemicals uh, uh, added into the cosmetic products or baby care products. So see when we. Uh, have to go for these kind of uh, certification. That means. somehow even if we want to use a gentle products known as baby care products which are considered to be more gentle than normal cosmetic product still there is a doubt that it might contain certain chemicals which might harm the soft skin of the babies <clears throat> so this is the mama's earth is the first brand in asia to get this uh, certification Uh, well uh, moving ahead we are entering into the latest of technologies which have uh, made a great impact in the field of cosmetics uh, which is called digital technology more popularly as artificial intelligence uh, beauty brands are now leveraging the latest advancements in artificial intelligence and machine learning augmented now this is another term called augmented reality and virtual reality data and analytics cloud computing and internet of things ai is incorporated in various aspects of the skin care industry this is a very interesting uh, picture i got from the some article i'm using it <clears throat> a report by wonderman thompson intelligence shows that the beauty industry is turning to science and technology to meet the consumer hunger for hyper personalization now what does it mean why i like this line was that now like personal medicines personalized cosmetic products are the need of the hour i have become actually the need i have become a fashion are in vogue are become a, a demand they are in demand rather i must say uh, we could not make personalized we were not we are still not very successful in making personalized medicines we are still doing a lot of work on it but with these apps with these uh, artificial intelligence into picture and cosmetics being a superficial kind of phenomena uh, like it is meant for surface not much physiological changes or studies are required so this is being used uh, i'll first talk about a artificial uh, augmented reality i'm sorry with ai product experience 
The technology is capable of detecting the face and overlaying virtual makeup that looks as realistic as its physical copy. Using the camera, consumers can try on beauty products and find their perfect color match. So now you don't have to go to the market to buy the shade of your own choice of lipstick or uh, foundation or whatever. So here the app will actually connect you to that those products and you can match it with the shade online. Virtually you can get connected and you can select your shade. Augmented reality is being used by many cosmetic firms and apps to let consumers test on makeup before purchasing. It is not necessary to visit a cosmetic or makeup store. Instead, all you need to do is to download apps and try makeup products from your home. So it's, see how easy it has become. It is easy. Uh, it has become easy for us to purchase and it has become easy and convenient for the cosmetic companies to, uh, you know, reach out to the consumers. Uh, they don't have to wait for the consumers to come to the shops, right? So they don't have to buy big shops also, expensive shops also, or rent out shops also. Smartphones and attachments with skin care scanning technology for hyper customized analysis and product recommendations bring dermatology direct into consumer homes. Now, well, uh, some companies also doing innovative work and uh, engineering is involved. And it's good to hear that uh, they're also thinking of those uh, people or those segments of the society, those uh, like little groups of the society, which were uh, not able to use these products due to certain uh, physical uh, inabilities. So uh, there's a new thing. I've, I like this because uh, last day they had some meeting, some conference of CEC, and uh, there was a product which is launched by... Uh, Again, the beauty leader, L'Oreal, which thinks much more ahead. And here, inclusivity is uh, uh, thought of where they have uh, thought of people who have those uh, gross, uh, uh, like uh, limited fine motor skills, where they're shaking of hands, etc. So they made a particular device for it, which is based on this. An estimated 50 million people globally live with limited finer motor skills. This makes some daily gestures like applying makeup challenging. The scientists and engineers in L'Oreal have developed a gadget to help those with limited mobility apply makeup. That's not only the like uh, people are working on the ingredients of the products. Even if they've made some good products, uh, it will not be useful or it will not be worth if the people are not able, some, uh, some segment of the society are not able to use it. Everybody is not able to use it. So why should anybody should be left out? So they have thoughtfully designed a gadget which can help the products to be applied. So Hapta is the name given. It's a handheld, ultra-precise, smart makeup applicator for users with limited, as I was talking about packaging. So this is applicator is a part of packaging with limited hand and arm mobility, offering them the ability to steadily apply lipstick at home. So that's wonderful. Then there's another very interesting gadget which has come. People uh, who are not blessed with like thick eyebrows or good hair growth on the face. So they find, uh, they normally use um, coal sticks and all, kajal sticks to make their um, eyebrows. So here again, an engineering uh, uh, innovation has been done. So uh, this is a gadget called Brow Magic, developed by cosmetics giant L'Oreal in partnership with the tech company Prinker, a pioneer in printed non-permanent tattoos. So this device, uh, is very precise and uh, it is made up of 2400 tiny nozzles uh, and printing technology uh, with up to 1200 drops per inch. This is the printing resolution. This magic is first handheld lightweight electronic brow makeup applicator to provide consumers with the most precise brow shape in seconds. So this is basically cosmetics is all about uh, providing beauty uh, solutions. So this is one way of providing beauty solutions. Then another uh, new thing, uh, new thing that technology has intervened and uh, provided to the consumers is automatic hair analysis. Now we normally classify hairs as ethnic hair types like curlies or thick or thin or dry or oily. So uh, the products, all products or one product will not suit uh, the same uh, different hair types. So people would again like to have personalized hair products for uh, their uh, hairs. Uh, so for that, 
analysis of the quality of hair is essential. And this is an automatic hair analysis. It's a technology that assists in hair care, a device that has infrared plus light sensors to evaluate the quality, dampness level, and tone of the hair. The key component of the gadget is an NFC chip that facilitates interconnection between the hair of the customer and the device. So there's a uh, NFC, a chip, it's a near field communication chip, uh, which helps in uh, having a, con a communication between the hair sitting at uh, of a person sitting at home and uh, somewhere else. Many cosmetic brands utilize this technology to assess the quality of hair to formulate products according to the customer needs. So by and large, a lot of uh, things and, uh, are going on in the field of cosmetics and um, product development of cosmetics, inclusion of new ingredients. Somehow they are trying to make the world more beautiful. But uh, what is important is that while making this world so beautiful, it uh, has to be ensured or it has to be controlled uh, in a way that in all this ambition of making the world beautiful, uh, harm is not done. Certain ingredients or chemicals or gadgets are not used which might spread radiation or which might uh, uh, spoil the skin or which might be allergic or which might in, uh, so, uh, like uh, impact the environment. So all these things are also have to be uh, considered uh, while designing a product or uh, developing a cosmetic formulation. Uh, for this, cosmetic vigilance is in vogue and we have to be uh, participative in it. Anything we come across, any information we get to know should be reported to the nearest concerned, either doctor or pharmacist or a cosmetic vigilance office or uh, maybe pharmacovigilance office if a specific cosmetic vigilance branch is not there. <clears throat> role of all uh, these things in building a quality cosmetic products is uh, like I'm again coming concluding and coming back to the role because it is not one person's responsibility uh, the researcher has to incorporate conscious in science by the manufacturer has to follow the guidelines strictly and follow some ethics uh, and the regulator has to be sensitive to change in technology so that they can be updated they can you know, uh, upgrade and make their uh, regulations accordingly with the change in technologies around uh, these products. And even the consumer is responsible, though the consumer is king, but they are responsible. They should be aware of any changes, why this is uh, new, why this is looking different, what is the reason, and so much uh, information you can find even on the internet. And they should be responsive. They should let the authorities know if something is going wrong. So for conscience and science, I must say that uh, the researcher should know that the research should have a purpose, should have science, should be socially relevant, should be eco-friendly, should be ethical. With these, I just like to sum up and share some of my small contributions in this field, share them. It's a book I got, <coughs> wrote, co-authored. This is the uh, monograph I contributed for the consumer ways. <clears throat> awareness the movement of Jago Grahak Jago regarding cosmetics. These are some invited book chapters. This is a very nice moment uh, uh, which happened in my life. I was invited out of the blue. But yes, it was a very good experience. Uh, I got to know that Korea, South Korea also makes quality products uh, at cost effective and they're crazy about cosmetics. Every second shop I visited in Seoul was a cosmetic shop. And uh, people are crazy. All age groups, all, all especially females, all age groups, they use cosmetics very, very fondly. This is a small opportunity. I got to uh, so present my work at Singapore, USA. This is, was again a cherishable moment. One of my scholars who was evaluated by <clears throat> scientists from Australia and France for her anti-acne work of Palmarosa oil was uh, awarded her work was appreciated little somehow somebody figured me out somewhere and uh, decided to cover me in their profile in a book as well as on the desktop of a calendar they decided to launch that was very thoughtful of them uh, I'm a little a small worker in this area still a student of cosmetic science with this 
<clears throat> I would like to sum up. Uh, in case you have any questions, please, uh, I think you must have uh, penned down till now or shared with the coordinator, Dr. Payal. And I'm really, really very thankful to all of you for inviting me, for giving your Sunday to me and making me a little study more further. And I'm, I apologize if uh, somehow uh, inadvertently I have uh, not said properly or uh, been not able to include, include due to the time uh, paucity. But I tried my best uh, to give the information I was aware of. And thank you so much for this patient listening. But I must say that the market is growing. The cosmetic product market is growing at a very good pace year after year. And these are one of the most fastest selling FMCGs because a lot of technologies are uh, can be incorporated, blended with it, and the quality can be upgraded. Uh, but we must always keep our consumers in the center because the consumer is the king. And quality for money is the need of the hour. With these words, I thank you once again. And uh, in case I have uh, somebody has questions, I would like to take them. Thank you. Hey, thank you, ma'am, for the wonderful session and letting us dive into the enigmatic field of cosmetics. Now, uh, before uh, the, the conclusion, I would like to take some questions that I have taken from the chat box. The first question is by the Rupam that during preparation of any herbal formulation, are the clinical trials needed to submit the report on publishing? Uh, uh, thanks for this question. Uh, actually, it's not a matter of herbal cosmetics. Or co if you call it a cosmetics, you don't need a clinical trial. But if you're claiming something which brings a change, a physiological change, then definitely you need to submit some clinical data. Okay. Especially if you're going for some uh, commercial work. Yes. Okay. Ma the second question is asked by Satya that kindly suggest some books for the preparation and standardization for cosmetics. Well, the different books, uh, you have, I think latest, I don't remember the versions, but uh, you have some GMP guidelines and for formulation, uh, like what a particular category or uh, like overall knowledge? They are saying for overall knowledge of the cosmetic standardization and their preparation. See, standardization, uh, see, uh, the book I wrote was like put in two parts. Uh, though I'm, I'm to revise on it, but uh, uh, like uh, if you can get the older version of it, or older edition. So I had divided into the basics, the water and cosmetics, botanicals and cosmetics, uh, emulsification, method of emulsification. Then the second segment is on skin cosmetics, hair cosmetics, uh, testing methods. Uh, the Bureau of Indian Standards did not allow me to use uh, as such their methods, but you can buy those uh, standards from the site of uh, Bureau of Indian Standards if you want to do it here. It depends like... If it is for a commercial purpose, you need to see which market it is. Is it Indian market? Is it some other market? So first, get the standards from the websites, right? Because these standards are always evolving. Maybe what I wrote in the my book in 2005 might have changed now. Even I'm going to refer to the latest uh, standards. So these BI standards are available on the website. You can buy them. Uh, for to start with, you can refer to my book, which is written in a very simple language to help students. I've just uh, uh, shared the reference of it. It is uh, Cosmetic Technology, Nandan Khar, and by Birla Publications. Okay. So the next question is, what are the quality tests for the gels that are used in cosmetics? See, quality tests for gels, because gels as such are not categorized in the BIS list, but gels are kind of, as I told you, semi-solid dosage forms. And whatever we do the test for normal, like viscosity, rheology, pH, exotropy, that we'll be doing, right? If you added some ingredient to it, so then you are, and even you have to ensure that you add certain preservatives to it. So they have to be uh, safe preservatives, like skin safe preservatives. And uh, the container should be such. But if you are going to test for its release rate or uh, if you added certain, you know, say, vesicular drug delivery systems to it, 
then you will have to go for entrapment efficiency then you'll have to go for load uh, uh, capacity loading capacity etc so it depends what kind of formulation you are making it's a simple gel so basic uh, thixotropic studies and stability studies would be required ph would be required pH is essential because our uh, the product should not be irritant to the skin. It is a uh, product for the skin, so non gritty. Though we don't expect this in gels, but definitely a test would be required. Yeah. So the next question is asked by Monica that whether any single platform is available uh, where one can find all the guidelines that are related to the cosmetics, or we need to check the different regulatory authorities of different countries. Well, uh, I think that will be advisable if you go uh, to the regulatory uh, like websites of these regulatory bodies, uh, because even there, a lot of changes are taking on a day-to-day -day basis. It, these are live platforms now. And uh, certain platforms are communicative also. If you write a question to on the US FDA side, where they say contact, you'll get a reply also. And they are very, uh, the uh, regulations are evolving very fast. And there's nothing like, it doesn't take efforts at all. You just have to click. And further, there'll be another link. You'll have to click the link again. Uh, if you're satisfied, there'll be, uh, it's okay. Otherwise, you go for a link. They, it's a very user-friendly uh, websites. Even the Sugam portal or the U CDSC website of India has also launched a lot of PDFs, organograms, uh, they are becoming very user friendly nowadays. So, in case uh, there uh, somebody is really serious about it and not able to find, they can reach out to me. You can share my uh, email ID to, with them. I'll try to help them find these things. Okay, ma'am. So the next question is asked by Samiksha. Uh, can you, ma'am, please share about the career options that are available for the M form student in a cosmetic or a cosmetical industry? Yeah, that's a very good question, a very sought after question. And uh, let me tell you one thing. Uh, one thing is that uh, long back, I was invited to attend the PCD subsection 19 meeting of uh, uh, BIS. Uh, it was an invitation. And uh, the member secretary had invited me. It's very, It was very nice to know that the chairperson of that committee, which makes standards, is the Drug Controller General of India. So the topmost person who is into the committee is the, the person from pharmacy. And during lunchtime deliberations, I uh, was introduced to most of the representatives that came from, uh, because it happens normally once in a year. And uh, all the representatives from all the cosmetic companies of India who are work, manufacturing in India come. So my, uh, to my knowledge or understanding, around 90% were from, were m -Pharm. So that was again a very good feeling. And so there's no doubt of actually uh, job opportunities or career opportunities, I realized. So, you know, what is nowadays required is along with a degree, you need a skill set. What is required in the cosmetic industry is either you have a good, like a patent during your research work or a good formulation development, which you can reach ahead to the in the formulation division. Or you have a good analytical skill to test a particular category, say flavonoid testing by, say, HPTLC. You know, you're good at HP. So if you have good acumen or some one skill set, good, uh, like, command or a good, uh, you're, like, uh, you are good at one thing, then this industry is open. Another thing I would recommend uh, to all the students over here, uh, who seek to who seek a career uh, want to seek a career in uh, pharma uh, cosmetics? There is an organization called ISCC, Indian Society for Cosmetic Chemists. There's a studentship membership form, right? So please become annual members or life members as per your uh, wish. But the, it's a they have a WhatsApp group. They have a WhatsApp group of life members rather. But you'll get some interaction, some something getting up from there, and some links to help you find a placement. So if you are passionate about it, there will you'll find a way out. Thank you, ma'am, for this answer. And one last question is from Monica. Uh, Ma'am, can you please give the idea about the steps that are required to launch a trade secret cosmetic in Indian and global market? 
well even i am holding a patent <laughs> which i am looking for it is a matter of technology transfer and uh, you know it all starts from the right connections uh, how you all have to find the main thing i was told is you have to uh, scale up and prove to somebody that uh, yes you, they can uh, take up your product so because once it goes into their hands it doesn't remain a trade secret so the other way around is you do start your own startup so be your own entrepreneur and uh, help others or your friends also to get employment along with your partnerships along with you it has a great future if you uh, i'll suggest monica that please do uh, read the latest cosmetic rules 2020 requirements for manufacturing cosmetics they have made it very easy you don't even need a, a pharmacy degree you if you 12 science uh, with chemistry it's fine with them and you see the kind of uh, so you need to have kind of again the passion the little bit of determination risk taking ability a little entrepreneurship a little financial support and uh, maybe you do some little branding in your own uh, city in your own uh, mother's group kitty party group or some chota sa like make a uh, value for your product and uh, as you grow up you can expand into a bigger business because these people will not take up trade secrets they will ask documents for everything so if you want to keep the secret with you they'll not no no buyers i'm sorry to say this has to be you know scaled up validated documented they, it should be worth it and by the time you disclose all the main thing about it it's gone out of your hands i did once to somebody Rightly said, ma'am. Uh, so anyways, uh, there, there's always a ray of hope and uh, we learn from our uh, mistakes. No, uh, it's always, you know, good decision comes from bad experience only. <laughs> Rightly said, ma'am. Uh, thank you, ma'am, for the valuable answers and enriching us with your knowledge. So but I'll wish, I'll wish that many of uh, my audience uh, should take up this field uh, because, uh, you know, you with the heart of a pharmacist will always uh, have conscience and science. You'll always work ethically. I'm very, very sure. And I want such people to come ahead with these products. Yes, surely, ma'am. Pharmacy is a very noble profession and the people are very genuine in pharmacy. So thank you, ma'am. So to conclude this webinar, we would like to express our heartfelt gratitude to all uh, our esteemed speaker, participants, and the guests for joining us today. Your active engagement and insightful contributions have made this event truly enriching and valuable. As we bring our insightful journey through the world of quality cosmetics, role of evolving technologies and regulations to a close, we find ourselves enriched with a deeper understanding of the dynamic interplay between innovation, safety, and compliance in cosmetic industry. Throughout this webinar, we have explored the transformative potential of technology and its impact on shaping the landscape of cosmetics, manufacturing formulation, and consumer experience. We have also gained valuable insights into the pivotal role that regulations play in ensuring the product quality, safety, and ethical practices. The discussions led by our esteemed speaker, Professor Dr. Sanju Nanda, have been both enlightening and thought-provoking, highlighting the opportunities and challenges presented by the convergence of technology and regulations. We have learned about the exciting possibilities that lie ahead in terms of personalized products, sustainable practices, and enhanced consumer engagement. It's important to recognize that cosmetic industry is on a continuous journey of evolution and staying at the forefront of these changes is essential for businesses and professionals alike. The advancement we have explored today not only offer new horizons for growth and innovations, but also reinforce our commitment to delivering safe and high quality products to consumers. Throughout the discussion, Professor Sanju Nanda Ma'am have explained very nicely about the purpose of cosmetics, different cosmetics products available, cosmetic uh, market dynamics, global market future, potential role of quality cosmetics with respect to the safety, performance, stability, label claims, 
and the problems that are associated with the surface of the skins, quality validation of cosmetics, cosmetic ingredients that require regulation, GMPs that are associated with the cosmetics and its benefits, role of ISO, MOCRA regulation, therapeutic agents in cosmetics, cosmeceuticals, new technology in vogue, regulatory status of cosmetics, the role of different certifications in cosmetics, and the role of digital technology in the cosmetics. The expertise and knowledge that is shared by our distinguished speaker, including Professor Dr. Sanju Nanda, Dr. Shashi Alok, Mrs. Monica Sabrawal, Dr. Saurabh Kose, Dr. Sanji Nagde, Mr. Ankur Agarwal, and entire SPSS committee have been instrumental in shedding the light on this cutting edge approach and making this event successful. We extend our gratitude to each of you for your active participation, engaging questions and valuable insights shared during this webinar. Your contributions have contributed to the richness of our discussions and overall success of this event. As we conclude, let us remember that our learning doesn't end here. The insights gained today will serve as guiding lights as we navigate the ever-evolving cosmetic landscape, leveraging technology responsibly, and adhering to the evolving regulatory standards. Thank you for the part of this engaging and enlightening session. We look forward for your continued engagement in the future events and endeavors. Wishing you all success in your pursuit of excellence in the cosmetic industry. Had a great day. Thank you, ma'am. Namaskar. Thank you. Can I leave? Yes, ma'am.